Hi, I'm Robin Tudor, founder of Empower Total Health, and the title of this week's weekly update is If You Want Your Child to Do Well in School, Pass the Broccoli and Hold the Cordial. Every parent, at least every parent that I know of, wants their child to have the best chance of success at life. And whether you like it or not, how well a child does at school is an important determinant of their future employment opportunities and their earning capacity, which in turn affects their health status, their personal fulfillment and their life satisfaction. Parents often invest considerable amounts of money in after school tutoring and private school fees to try to improve their child's academic attainment. But many are neglecting one of the most important Important ways that they can help their child by controlling what's in the breakfast bowl, in the lunchbox and on the dinner plate every day. A new study that examined the associations between children's eating habits and their NAPLAN scores has found that eating vegetables improves academic performance while drinking sugar-sweetened beverages such as soft drinks and cordial impairs it. Researchers examined data on five dietary variables, fruit intake, vegetable intake, consumption of takeaway, sugar-sweetened beverages and breakfast, and scores in the five domains, which are reading, writing, grammar slash punctuation, spelling and numeracy of NAPLAN, which is a standardised academic achievement test that all Australian children sit in years three, five, seven and nine. Because the income and educational level of parents affects children's academic attainment, the researchers adjusted for these factors statistically so that they could zero in purely on the effects of diet on the test scores. Consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages such as cordial and soft drinks had the greatest impact on NAPLAN test scores, with higher intake of, of these beverages associated with lower overall scores. And higher intake of sugar-sweetened beverages negatively impacted on four out of the five assessment domains, reading, writing, numeracy and grammar punctuation. Kids who drank four to six glasses per day of sugary beverages scored an average of 46 points lower in the reading domain than kids who drank less than one glass per day. And on the other hand, kids who ate vegetables with the evening meal performed significantly better on the spelling and writing test than those who ate vegetables less often and tended to do better on the grammar, punctuation and numeracy tests as well. In fact, eating vegetables with dinner every night of the week was associated with an average 86 point higher score score on the NAPLAN writing test than never eating vegetables at night. And yes, sadly, there were kids in this study who never ate vegetables at night and one assumes never ate vegetables at all. What's really sad, though, is that over half of the children in this study ate less fruit and vegetables and drank more sugar-sweetened beverages than recommended by the Australian Dietary Guidelines, which in my opinion set pretty low standards, two pieces of fruit a day and five serves of vegetables. Now, my kids eat more than five serves of vegetables at lunch alone, let alone at dinner. And even more disturbingly, rates of vegetable and fruit consumption went down and sugary beverage consumption went up as children got older. So at the very time in life when their academic attainment is most crucial to their future opportunities, kids' eating habits are deteriorating. Whereas half of children in year three ate two to three pieces of fruit per day, by year nine, only 40% of children did so. And, and conversely, while only 13.5% of year three kids drank a sugar-sweetened beverage daily, by year nine, nearly a fifth of kids were doing this. So what can parents do to help their children eat better? Well, number one is to teach them from the earliest age that what we eat affects our health, happiness and success in life. It's usually not very easy to motivate kids to eat well for the sake of their health unless they have a chronic condition like asthma that's rapidly and noticeably impacted on by diet. Certainly, bowel cancer and heart attacks are way too far off in kids' future for them to even worry about, so that's not motivating for them. But most kids want to do well in school. Many are motivated to improve their performance in sport and athletics. None of them like feeling miserable, and all of them care about their appearance. Our food choices affect every single one of those domains, and you can check the article that accompanies this video to find other articles that I've written on these different topics. Number two is to model healthy eating behaviours to them. Kids who grow up watching parents enjoy fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes are much more likely to develop a preference for these foods as well. If you're all on board with healthy eating but your partner isn't, ask if he or she would be willing to eat healthily in the home and save the junk food for when they're out of the house and not with the kids in tow. 
if kids grow up seeing mum eating broccoli at the dinner table while dad eats ice cream and chips on the couch in front of the TV, guess which parents' food they're going to want to try? Parents need to pull together for the sake of their kids and obviously if they change their eating habits, it improves their health and well-being as well. Number three is if it's not healthy, just don't bring it home. I'm always amazed when parents who come to see me concerned about their kids' eating habits will wring their hands and tell me that their kids won't eat the fruit that they have in the fruit bowl, but they'll scarf down the chocolate biscuits from the pantry. I'm not amazed that the kids prefer the biscuits. What I'm amazed at is that the parent thinks it could have gone any other way. Parents are in total control of their child's eating habits when they're very young, and it's at this age that their taste preferences and also their notions about what constitutes appropriate food are set. If you want your child to be a healthy eater, don't expose them to salty, sugary, and or fatty foods like crackers and cheese and bacon and ham and ice cream and biscuits at a young age. Read my article, Why Are Salt, Sugar and Fat So Addictive? to learn more about the corrupting influence of these ubiquitous substances on our palates. And also read Michael Moss's book, Salt, Sugar, Fat, to find out just what the food industry is up to and how they're manipulating our eating preferences from the youngest age so that we become lifelong consumers slash junkies of their products. I also have an article called Top 7 Tips for Getting Kids to Eat Healthy Foods, which again is in my article directory on my website, which you can read for more guidance. If you're worried about your child's eating habits, you really just have no idea where to start. Make an appointment to see me. We can either do an online or a face-to-face -face consultation, and together we'll map out a plan of action to transform your child's eating habits from wherever they are now into what it's, what it's going to take for your child to be the happiest, healthiest version of themselves that they could possibly be. Hope you enjoyed this topic. Please feel free to like and share this video and I will catch up with you for next week's weekly update.